Well, and welcome to Tights TV. Um, quite a bit to talk about, a few controversial moments. Uh, I think, you know, everybody what's watched it or seen it and watched the replays back will know what we're going to get on about. But uh, today I've got Dan and Ryan. Dan and Ryan, thanks for joining me. Uh, pl no uh, appreciate you taking your time out and joining. Um, yeah, before we get kick off with, with show, uh, just, uh, you know, the sad news about Sir Bobby Charlton. Um, 86 year old, believed to be dementia. You know, we've been taking sin out of life for the last few years, but I kind of remember bits of, you know, clipping, uh, you know, clippings and stuff. I'd never saw him play live, obviously. Uh, but by all accounts, you're a decent footballer, you know, and that's not an understatement. It's uh, a legend. You look at 1966 World Cup team, what he did at Man United as well. Uh, highly, highly regarded, not just in this country, but around the world. You see tributes coming in from such as Barcelona, Bayern Munich, you know, uh, stalwarts and legends in your night, uh, players from abroad, such as like Pelly, you know, and uh, Cruyff and stuff like that. You put him in that kind of role, a player, but I mean, Dan Ryan, uh, I would say about Sir Bobby. Um, yeah, for me, for for me, is like I say, I think legends a word used too much, but you can't you can't use any other word uh, mm. for Bobby Charlton. I've never seen a player before or since hit a ball truer than Bobby Charlton. He he, he hit it and go like it. He didn't deviate. He didn't curl. He didn't move. He just went like an absolute rocket. <laughs> Every single thing. When he hit it, they stayed it, and they just went like an arrow, didn't they? Just mm. absolutely dead straight. But there's nothing like an exercise missile. They knew it was coming. They couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and the, I think it's just, you know, it was such a, an important part of that 66 winning squad. Uh, he got both goals in the both goals in the semi final. He got the opening goal against, you know, the first goal in the tournament against Mexico. Mm. Um, but then not just not just for England, I, you know, because he, he won his record goal score for a long time with 48. Oh, well, it was 49, wasn't it? Because Lineker got 48. Yeah, Bobby Charlton was 49, wasn't it? And he held that record for so, so long until until Rooney broke it, actually. Um, and obviously, Harry Kane's broken it since. But it, it was so uh, important for Man United as well. And play, playing in such big games, you know, the first, winning the first European Cup in 1968, scoring, scoring one of the goals in the final to win it. Um, but then after after his career's finished, just being an ambassador for the sport, being an ambassador for Manchester United, um, mm. such a massive part of that, you know, a part of that club and a part of their success. And you know, I think it, with him and his brother, they were just probably never see it ever again. Well, we said two two brothers playing at the highest level together, mm. um, it, it, like in a, in a world you know, in a world World Cup winning squad. You know, it, 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 people like that don't come along. They're the once in a lifetime kind of people out there. And it's a you know, eighty six is a great age to live. So what a life he's led. Uh, it's just sad, obviously, that he's that he's passed away. Mm. Yeah, damn. Yeah, I mean, obviously, some of that being mentioned, obviously, survived the Munich Air disaster. What a big part of that team. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I think, in, I think the Munich Air disaster were 58, and I think they won it in 68. Well, yeah. They were, you were part of that squad through the entirety of that rebuild, um, to the rebuild of obviously replacing the players that passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and that's. You know, and that, that's obviously a short part of his character, and I think that's why obviously Man United fans absolutely adore him, and and, and rightfully so. You know, uh, but incredible player for club and club and country. Um, always used to speak about how he loved to play for his country, and and how he, he was a big source of pride for him, um, and obviously a, a good a good ambassador outside the game as well. I think he also has a lot to do with local charities. Mm. Just, yeah. I hear that you know it's obviously it's a different time, and I'm never going to judge a footballer for not being like him. But you can easily say you don't make him like him anymore. You know, uh, yeah. he's uh, yeah. it, 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 diff made a different stuff, and he's had so many challenges to overcome. Um, and um, yeah, he's a legend of England. He's a le legend of world football. Mm. Uh, when you've got I've seen so many players make incredibly compliment, uh, incredibly endearing compliments about him. Pele, Eusebio, these are players that are that are classed as the best ever. And I think, in some ways, you can say that Bobby was sort of Bobby were, were up there with up there with the best of them. And 
So uh, it's a very sad loss. Um, sad loss to football in world. Sad loss to Manchester United. And thoughts go out to his friends and for his friends and family. Yeah, well said. Yeah, well said. I mean, yeah, just going back to you know, Munich. She's asked to not not a you know not a uh, memories for so many people um, and Tommy Taylor part of that as well. You, you know, um, and I know Manuel have always like held. Had, had close relationships with, with Barnsley, and uh, I think Sir Alex Ferguson also re remembered back, remembered the history and stuff like that. So mm. again, it's it's great to have that get, bit of a bonding history. Uh, unfortunate circumstances, but yeah, yeah, uh, just what like Dan and Ryan said, your thoughts and prayers go out to you know family and close friends and that. Uh, again, it gets banded about probably a bit too often, but a true legend at game, uh, Sir Bobby Charlton, uh, sadly passed away. Um, so back on to Barnsley matters. I mean, Ryan, I mean, first half, what can, can you say? I mean, five ball, I mean, handball, should I say? Um, and to ball controversy. Uh, where do you want to go with this, Ryan? Uh, what we are taking in first half? Well, first half, uh, right, I'll start, I'll start with penalty because it weren't a penalty, it, you know, obviously it was against Bar, but that, I mean, that's. The fact that nobody appealed for it, <laughs> none of their players appealed for it, none of the fans are appealing for it. But, but I was just watching him, I was just shouting and saying, That's what's happened. We've lost ball in attack there, and they've nearly gone and scored. And then he's pointing to the spot. I was like, Eh, what's happened? I can't, but you know, for, it to, for McCart to be sliding in, he slid in, he has deflected it with his thigh, and it's ricocheted up in his hand when his arm's out because he's outstretched, he's, he's in that position. How can that possibly consider handball? Mm. If he'd have stopped it with his hand directly, obviously because the ball were going towards goal. This is the thing, it's probably going to he he's, 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 he's blocked it with his leg and he's ricocheted up and hit his arm. Deflections are not supposed to be given as a ball. Depends who you're not supposed suppose. to be given. Yeah, that's, that's all I saw watching yeah. Liverpool Everton game yesterday, the one where they were shouting for it. And it won on ball by the Everton player, but it ricocheted up so quickly mm. that there's no way he could get out and his arm went outside of his body anyway. But it ricocheted up. So they were saying on their commentary team that deflection shouldn't be given as on ball. Mm. Um, so, yeah, poor, poor, poor decision. I thought that Kelly, he nearly got to it, didn't he? <laughs> I thought yeah, I thought he was going to save time. it, but it, it took it away at corner. But that 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 aside, we were woeful in first half. We were absolutely garbage. The amount of times that we get ball away in midfield and, and let them run on, you know, if, if Leighton only had the shooting boots on, we should have been mm. two or three knocked down at half time. They just they just couldn't take the chances. Well, it's, it's not so much they didn't take the chances away. They didn't create the chances when they got the opportunities. They didn't have to get they didn't have to get to the point where they needed to get a decent shot off, did they? So, but the amount of times Kane gave it away, and and you know the one where John Russell got it, ball two slayer, and he got his he got his pocket picked. I thought Benson were. I, I, I'm glad to see him back in the team to be given an opportunity because you know. Were you like, surprised they started in front of Phillips? I was I'm very surprised, mate, but. You know, sometimes when coaches with them there every day, you think, has he, has he been shining in training? Has he, has he deserved his opportunity when it's arisen? And it's like opportunity knocks, isn't it? Hmm. And pff, it worked great, would it? It worked great. So, yeah, first half were shocking, mate. We just didn't play well at all. It could only get better, <laughs> um, only get better. In, in the second half. I thought we improved in second half. I thought we played better, but we, were certainly, we, we certainly weren't brilliant, were we? <laughs> hmm. It was just... It was just better than first half, you know. We we actually played a bit of football. We tried to get, we tried to, you know, we were a lot more attacking, a lot more, a lot more direct. Um, um, I think in end, I think you know, a draw would probably be a fair result. I don't think, you know, I thought that at one point I thought we, it would get into. I thought we can go and win this. We can go and win this. I mean, it'd probably be an undeserving, but we can go and win it. And then later on, it got back into it, and they created some chances. That's the second half was much more of a watchable game, weren't it? A bit more, a bit more end to end, but that no real quality in front of goal from both teams, uh, apart from obviously Kane's um, super strike, no. which what which what a great goal. Which I don't want to slate the lad too much because it was a fantastic finish, but that was about his only positive contribution to the game. Because <laughs> other than that, it was... I'm going to get on to that. Don't worry, I'll get that covered. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know it's coming, so I'll let, I'll let Dan. I'll, yeah, that's my bit now. I'll let Dan there. Uh, let right. Dan. So Dan, I mean, <clears throat> so Dan, yeah, just going on from Ryan. I mean, we kind of agree with first day for you know not much of a spectacle to watch. To be fair, 
Uh, the handball, for me, he wants an handball. It, it, like Ricochet yeah. from his spine, that's why I, I kind of chipped in. Five, I mean, five ball, handball. Uh, even when you look it back, it, you know, the laws at game, and it's like what we're saying, you know, it, it, this is where it all gets down to the officials. It took, and it took a bit of time to be fair, because I wondering what was happening. You know, it won't, it, you know, immediately, like, oh, who's get it? Who's it? And it was a penalty. And I'm thinking, well, it was ball to hand, it won't hand to ball for close proximity. But yeah, Dan, what we are taking it, mate? Uh, well, yeah, just to address point referees, I think you were, I think you were garbage. No control of a game. Um, I mean, the Cosgrove sending off. I mean, the first of all, apparently he called. He were very. He, he dissent with referee. You know, um, might have called him a rude name. I would have called him a lot more a rude name because he were garbage the entirety of the game. I mean, the, the, so just with that Cosgrove, he's gone up for Ed. Complete won it fairly and squarely. You know. And and he's he, he's he's getting a foul their way, and it's like you know, I mean I'm not excusing Cosgrove, um, I'm not excusing Cosgrove because he's lost his head and he shouldn't lose his head, but you know it's like come on, you know yeah. he, he's you know you're in it, it was one one at time. Cosgrove come on, he's tried to make it name for him, sending you know trying to put some influence into the game, and it, it, it put his influence onto the game, and, he, and he's getting a free kick and he's. You know, yellow card, and and because it, it's like, come on, and then second one, I think, you know, it's debatable. Frustration, but, frustration, you probably could see it in him, couldn't you? Because ball had um, already gone down, but free kick already been given, hadn't he? He, he just raced it and lunged in, didn't he? And yeah, and, 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 yeah, and then you've got, yeah, then you've got penalty, which you, you just need to say for what it is. It's not a penalty hmm. in the rules of the game. It's not a penalty. Uh, but we can argue over rules. I think I think the problem is, is that rules are the problem. Um, I think it's a shocking rule. This ball to land, or is it? You know, is it in a yeah. natural position? It's a load of old crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, you're making problems there that didn't exist at first place, and now we're and now we're on a you know it's being debated from Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two. It's just it's a crap rule, and everybody yeah. and just. It's it's causing more problems, and there's no way McCart could have done anything about that it, unless he went into that challenge like that with his hands down his side, which he's never going to. Which if he's he went down, first of all, he'd look like Tom Daly going for a dive, and secondly, it's just not the way. It's not what footballers do. They've never, yeah. you know, you've got to throw your sense to get in front of yeah. the ball to defend. Yeah. Um, but I, I think. Having said all that, I mean, I'm a believer in you met your own luck in this world, um, and we were dreadful yesterday. I mean, I, I mean, loads of people. I mean, Ryan says better second half. But yeah, yeah. Personally, my opinion only. Didn't really see it. I mean, we put attacking, we put attacking players on. How many touches, touches in box we had? Well, uh -huh. hardly any. I don't uh -huh. think. And so we got another attacking mid attacking player on. It, it you know it, it were it were rubbish. None of them deserve any praise. I mean, Herbie Kane, God bless him. I mean, that goal um, plastered over a very very dr poor performance from a senior player. He were losing ball constantly. He were misplacing passes. That was throughout the game. Um, now I don't know, but to be fair, I mean, we, to be fair to a lot of them, and and this is I'm not letting Herbie Kane off the hook, but I'm just not picking him, singling him out. All of them were dreadful, every single one. Well, not every single one of them. I think De Givney and McCart did a relatively good performance. Um, I think if it weren't for De Givney, I think we would have been three 0 down, and I and it wouldn't have been not deserved. I think we got off very, very lucky that game. I think Leighton Orient are an incredibly well-drilled side. I think Richard Wellens has done fantastic a job with them. And I think we're a little bit more, I think for what they've achieved for a club of their size, that is no disrespect to Leighton Orient whatsoever, but on their budgets is brilliant. And I think they can really go and, go and push on in this division. Um, we have just that little bit more quality, but we were dreadful. And I'm not, um, you know, I don't mind it being, I don't mind going away and having an hard laboured draw. That weren't hard laboured. We were rubbish. Oh. And uh, 
and uh, you could just tell there were no cohesion, no cohesion whatsoever. We were, they were, you know, Watters. Well, I mean, Watters weren't great, but Watters is making a run and he's screaming football. There were a time when it came out for a corner. Archibald, I know his blooming name, I shouldn't even know their player's name, no. but he was on ball so many times. Yeah. He got, but they passed it, and everybody was going, Who's marking him? Who's marking yeah. him? Who's marking him? It's like you should know. You should yeah. know who you're marking. And it, that, you know, that's that goes down to simple instructions from manager, you know. Um, but it just looked really wooden. It just looked not that fluid. They looked a bit. They looked like they'd been shackled, basically, and they were just getting. It was so dry and so scripted that Leighton Orion, as soon as the fun art hour, as soon as they'd kind of worked out what we were going to do with it, which were first 10 minutes, let's be honest, they knew exactly what to do. And, mm. you know, I mean, I think, I think there were a lot of questions yesterday a lot of questions and this has gone back from the last few games we've had uh well not the not, not last, last few but there's been a few times this season where we've gone and played like that and it's not good it's not good and it's it's something that needs to get, get be improved on and i think we're we're struggling to manage big players kane kane i know he didn't play well but Kane didn't have any, you know, he didn't have any freedom and he's been pressed. So what I'd argue is that maybe Russell or uh, Benson needs to be trying to make space for him. And it were like, he were isolated. It, 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 you just isolated big players out and you're just getting him to do the same stuff. Well, that were Kane, Cole, Watters. You're just getting him to do the same stuff over and over again. And it's not working. But they'll carry on doing it until they get it right. And it... And, this game, we didn't get it right for the whole 90 minutes, in my opinion. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, I think Richie Wellens, I think he's got Leighton Orient playing, and if it were pleasing at eye, but I think we also con contributed to that with some of his, his passing in for Stave, especially in for Stave. We, we sent to just like <sighs> woeful passes, basic passes, weren't doing anything, and ah, uh, Richie Wellens got there. If it had been more clinical up front, it could have been a lot worse in for Steve. And because the chances, like we're saying, Archibald, the amount of times they were making these runs, making these, and I'm thinking it's it's confusing because who's doing the job on him? Who's doing the job on this? And it's like I I have expected me right. We've had an international break. We run away again. We're going to come back fully on it, fully charged. Take game to him. We're going to push for it, it but it. For me, it seems to be opposite. It seems to be like a more laboured, more reserved kind of way we're playing. And I've seen some comments like saying, oh, yeah, but it's a way for moments to draw. And this. But again, I look at it when you watch the, the game, is that it's another side that we find difficult to break down. And yet again, we don't seem to adapt or alter his way to try and compensate for that. And, you know, you kind of know what you're going to get from Richard Willens. I just, I just got laying on him playing. So, if the second day, if I have expected me going, oh, he's going to go far at back, he's going to try and do a 4 3 3 or whatever, he's been sending chats and stuff. I think he's going to change it up here because he needs to address something because it's not working. But we didn't. It seemed to be just go through it again. I'm like, we need to have a plan B. It's not working. They're playing that kind of football for us. We need to be more of an attacking threat. And yet, we just seem to be. Like you just said, Veer Dan, come out second day if it seems to be going through motions. One strike from K, not taking that away from him. But apart from that, like I said, how many touches did we have the very attacking third? And what we went, well, you know what, we're on a threat here. I, I didn't see that. And my my concern is is that when we come up against the football inside, it's not just the other side of the league one, is that we come up against Rugby Town. People were saying, Oh, yeah, we've got Rugby Town at home, we're gonna win against this. They've had a decent form. They've won one note at, at Derby County. So, again, we know mugs. They'll be looking, coming to Auburn and thinking, look at their own record. If we can do what we can do, we could come away with something here. And, again, we need to then address that, but we don't seem to do it. We just seem to replace like for like. You know, I don't know what your take on it is, but I thought that in second half, right, we're going to have a plan B. We're going to do this. 
but we didn't. And and I think if we want to have got that break, because it wasn't on counter, we, we brought pretty quick, we got up front, came one strike and went in. I could not have seen us getting a goal if Kane would have got back. Um, I wouldn't have been like surprised, but I wouldn't have like, said, oh, we should have at least got a draw from that. Penalty aside, we didn't do a any favours for the rest of the game, thinking, yeah, do you know what? Was our urgency to do that? I didn't see that. Yeah, but you've just hit nail on head, Neil. You go one nil down. It's like, you know, come on. Why? It's almost like it. We go one nil down. They just give in. It's like it's like they don't know what to do once they go behind. It's, it's weird. I've seen people taking positives from this, saying, "Well, we've gone one nil down, but what a great comeback we've got! We've drawn one apiece. We haven't lost." Really? That's what Is that what you're looking at? Is that what you're looking at? You've got to look at the bigger picture. No, we didn't deserve it. Oh, we we didn't deserve it. That was that top and bottom, right? I, I, we didn't deserve. To, I, I don't think draw were a fair result. I think Lane or it would have come out. Lane or it fans would have come out that game and thinking, you know what, we we were unlucky, and the and they were, and they were unlucky. They played a lot better football. They were a lot better drilled. They didn't use time up ball. They were doing everything that we should be doing, and and putting a bit of putting impression onto showing that drive, but. It's it, it's it's so like deja vu this because mm. you know it, and it's getting repetitive. It's getting like okay, we've had a good win at Exeter, we've had a good win at Cambridge, but but it, I know that I know there's obviously sometimes you've got to make subs that that's not work that's not working for you, and I get that when it's not working for you, I get that right. But we're relying on that now. Mm. We're relying on bringing on five, uh, bringing on three subs to change things up. And it's like, well, if you want us to go more attacking, it's like it's like Collins is thinking, oh, you know what? Get to sixty minutes. If it's nil nil, fantastic. We'll switch things up. And it's like, mm. yeah, mm. well, there's a problem with that. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a problem with that because you know. Well, first of all, you know, the obvious one is if the score. And secondly, sometimes you're not, you know, some things, are, you, you don't get that look. You don't get that Robert Green. And and, it, and and another thing as well, you know, you've got a chairman who's saying, and a CEO saying, we want to go better than what we did last season and we want to get back into, we want to get back into championship. It's like, yeah, you're gonna do that with fetching four three subs on at 60th minute, then are you on 55th minute to change games? Because you because let's be quite frank, the team that you pour out don't know what they do. There's a bit of where they're lacking quality and composure, but also they don't look like they know what they're doing, which comes from which makes me think what were what 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 they're being told before they go out onto the pitch. Yeah. You the, know. Thing, the thing for me, the thing for me, Dan, is as well is the football's a bit drab. It's a bit drab, and it's not like you can say, "Oh, players didn't, you know, players weren't at the game, it weren't at the races that day." We're playing like that most games now. Yeah. So where is that coming from? Because the football, the sideways and backwards, and we don't seem to be getting into attacking position. But when we do, we look all right. But the time, but a lot of the game where it's just sideways, backwards, sideways, backwards, sideways. And we don't well, that wing. How many times did Nicky Kidd, Nicky Cannon receive it halfway up their half? You know what I mean? He said he weren't pushing on, he weren't pushing down wings to try and get down there, you know, try mm. and try and stretch him a bit. It's all a bit, it's all just a bit slow at times. You know what I mean? It's a well, bit it's, slow and a bit. And when and then well, we're it is, it, yesterday, like you said, with Richie Wellens it, 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 and the way he, he sets them up, when they were attacking, they were attacking in numbers and attacking at pace, and we we don't seem to. And it's mm. The, bit, the thing is, is that, um, that's what it is. It's a bit, it's, it's a frustrating watch. Yeah, no, it is, and you're right. You're right, Ryan. It is, and, and the, the, the thing is, is that, I mean, last season we didn't play. I don't think we played particularly great football uh, either, if I'm honest. But the problem, the thing, what we had last season, we had a an absolute eagle eye when opportunities were open, were opening up. So when a player made a run. We're like buff, and it's that there you've got ball that you you play ball in space, and then that opens up opportunities for you. 
we, we basically, what I'd argue, in other words, is that we're ruthlessly efficient. Um, the chances we had, we scored. Now we've gone other way. We're we're trying to play defensive minded football, which is fine, you know, but players are making runs and we're and we're not yeah. and we're not picking them out. You know, what we're doing and then what we're doing when we're not spotting these runs, or we're not spotting that player coming short so it opens space up for other people. What we're doing is then going up. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, what we'll do, we'll bang it that wing. So we're banging it that wing, Cotter and Cadden, or or Keith and Cadden or oh, Dodson. And then they're already prepared for that because they're like, well, managers already do, I would imagine managers have already done research on them uh, on us and know that that's the way that we're gonna do that's the that's where most of our attacking threat's gonna come from. And I mean we I mean, even with crosses coming in, you know, what that I thought looked looked good. There weren't many of them, but they were look, looked good. Watters were always three inch uh, three inch off at ball. And obviously I think one when I looked at one there were nearly two players on call because obviously he's a top goal scorer. So hmm. they're gonna know that he's gonna be a threat. Hmm. So I mean it's just we'll... one dimensional and it's and it's a lack of composure and I'm starting to get a little bit concerned that they look like they don't know what they're doing when they go forward. They just have no clue. I mean, uh, will, will, the, will the people in this will be saying, oh, yeah, but uh, you're a lot of doom and gloom merchants preferred in table. But when you look at table, you look, we're on 23 points, and you go down to eighth spot, we come under on 20. That's how tight it is. Yeah. So, it, and again, yeah, we're in first spot. Not a problem. That's great. We, don't, we play 13 games. There's Bolton behind us on goal difference, only on goal difference, who we'll play one game less. Yeah. If, so, yeah, and, but it's, and, it's a bit like saying if you had a if you had a child that were third, you'd want to push them to go first. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> you, know, like you know you look at Portsmouth, Portsmouth are, are, are in away with it, they're 31 points and they've won again. Yeah. You know, Oxford, they drew yesterday. Ideal opportunity to try and keep momentum up. Yeah, we've got a point. But my what my point is is that you can go down to like a late audience in 13 spot we're on 18 points two wins or a win and a draw it, it's it can change massive especially when mm-hmm. we beat games coming up at christmas period and my, and the thing is is all about this is that people will always tend to look at the the table where we are and it, oh we've got a good point away at late audience debatable we were lucky to get a point at late audience if i'm being honest then we'll be saying, oh, yeah, we've come back. We went one knock down, really. Come back. I'd rather have been like up at the race from the start, not being able to play a catch like we've said in here. And then at, end of, at five o'clock or, you know, whenever football uh, league gets updated and back with evening kickoffs and everything like that, we're looking and we're saying, nah, do you know what we're still third for? Just go a bit further over from where it says positioning third and go over where the point system is and start looking at the points. Start looking at the points there. Yeah. Because like I said, you've got Wickham Wonders in eighth spot on 20. It don't take much for us to ever draw, ever draw, and then the teams start picking up Derby in 11th spot and 18th. And we all know about Derby when their fans were kicking off. But again, they have a couple of wins on Bob. They're up being in the playoffs. So again, mm. this is going to chop and change about. Easy. Easy chop and change about. Going on to... Derby game. I mean, they they uh, had a uh, loss against Shrewsbury. We've got coming up on Tuesday, Ryan. Yeah, Shrewsbury Town. For me, I think Shrewsbury last season and were a bit of a shit house team. If I'm being honest, well, you know, under yeah. Steve Cottrell. Obviously, Steve Cottrell's gone. But again, <laughs> the form you, you looked at, we, we touched on it briefly. Another win, you know, a good win against Derby County. Let's be honest, Shrewsbury Town. We're back at home, under lights. Again, people were saying it's a winnable game, this. But our own form has been nowhere near what it has been last season. No. How can you see this going, mate? <sighs> um, do we I, need to make changes first? Yes. Yeah, we do. Um, I think someone's got to change it because the, the, the front two 
we we call and what has I said McAtee a little better in, in in preview for the game. I said you know he he looks like he's terrorising him off bench, coming at, um, at at tired legs. But I think he's got to start for me. I think he's he's just he's just a significantly better player than than Max Watters is um, huh. in, in my opinion. So then that, I'd probably I'd probably bring him in for Watters, and then hopefully start. I think that he did say Dick Collins in his pre post match interview that, that Callum Styles should be fit for Tuesday with illness. Um, so he should be all right for Tuesday. So he he he, he comes in for Benson, huh. um, and that's probably about it, really, because I can't put the cap put. I mean, Cody O'Keefe come off with a bit of a knock, didn't he, at half time? Supposed to be. That's yeah. why I thought. That's why I thought I'd come on. And Cody were rubbish yesterday. He would. T- how many times did he see him just jogging back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully there's that. Hopefully, O'Keefe's going to be fit to play at right wing back. I mean, the sooner we can get the centre back sorted out, we can push Jordan Williams out to right wing back again, and then O'Keefe can obviously be cover for him. I think. I think the sooner we can get that done, the better. Because mm. I just don't. As much as I like, I like Cotter's um, spirit. I just don't. I don't think he's got it. But no, no changes, mate. Um, no cherry change other than the ones that I mentioned there about uh, McAtee and yeah. Styles are coming in. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably his best his best options at the moment, unfortunately. Um I can see we need to get we need three points, mate. We need that that's that's top and bottom of it. We we, we need three points. Mm. And we'll, I think we can definitely beat them. We did double over them last season. We can definitely beat them. But it, again, it depends how we play, it depends how they turn up. They wanna um if they've got our tactics sourced of this slow build up play that we do. Um I said before, got uh, uh, late night game. I'm quite confident we're going to beat him, but where we played yesterday, we're we're not we're not fantastic, were it? Um, I'm still going to go in open, mate. I'm still going to go. I still think we can beat him, and I'm going to. I think maybe two 0 or something. We'll see. Two 0 yeah. I I kind of agree with what you're saying with uh, with changes, and I, I'm glad you said that about the how confident you are in this over you know before game and after. Is that and that's about this is going to be the key issue and what I said a bit uh, earlier, Dan, is that how do we approach this game? Because if if they come in with their game plan and we just kind of playing like we did in first half against Portsmouth, sideways, backwards, sideways, backwards, it's it's not going to be an easy watch. And we have been at all, we should be on the ascendancy. And I, I agree with you. I think McAtee should come in for what has. Styles well being well, you know, if he's like he's willing to be fit and everything. Yeah, coming for Benson. Uh, Killip's going to be in for Roberts because his Brock's thing is going to be out for a few weeks, so that's by the by, that's not going to happen. Depending on what happens in the right wing back situation, you probably could see Cotter there, but again, it doesn't inspire me for tracking back when it, it you know tough gets going. Good job, about me, so it's frustrating. Yeah. Uh, so I'm for me, I'm going to go. You've got to be going for an home win, you need a home win, uh, more for his own form, and I think confidence in fans back at home because. It's you know it's been a while we've seen some like pretty average poor performances at home. Uh, I'm going, I'm going to one Barnsley uh, on Tuesday night. Dan, I mean, how do you just what we've been saying there? How do you approach this? Would you make any changes? We need to be on front foot straight from kick off, mate, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I'd change it up a little bit. So I'd, I'd say McAtee for. Waters or Cosgrove in for Waters, um, but I'd also change Waters' positioning um, a little bit. Just have him drop a little bit deeper. So he's got we've got that extra man just to get to the ball and try and if you want to spray out on wings, you can do. But it opens it up a little bit, and you're pushing, you're taking somebody out, of, you're taking somebody out maybe out that defensive line, and opening things up a little bit for Cole and giving him a bit of um, giving him a bit of space in behind. Um, I know I keep banging on this drum like we did last season. It worked when we had Norwood in, and he were doing that. And he would have. And, and the thing is with McAtee as well, it does remind me a little bit of Norwood. He's a bit of. A, I don't mean this in his personal way, but he's a bit of a bully. He likes getting in <laughs> defenders' faces, and that's what you need. You need a little bit of aggression. You need a little bit of intensity. Um, yeah. So yeah, that so I put McAtee in Benson. I, I think he got through in too early. I, I'm I'm yeah. gonna be trying and be nice about it and try and look at it from his point of view. 
he he hadn't played. That was his first league game. He started in his first league. He started, you know, and that's to wow. me, it's like a bit throwing him into deep end, you know, a little bit <laughs> on reflection. So yeah. maybe maybe put Styles in there. Maybe put Styles in and then bring him on and let him have a couple. Of, if they want him to have, if they want him to have minutes, then yeah, fair enough. And if he's college choice going forward, then yeah, okay, you know. But he, he just seemed a bit through in. After and he, injury layoff for Matt, he looked a bit off it, didn't he? He looked off it. He looked so off pace. Um, did Benson? But yeah, so maybe Styles for Benson. Um, and I mean, defense, you couldn't really knock them actually. You couldn't really knock Williams to give him the car. They were, yeah. mm. they were probably his best players. And just, that's quite, I mean, one of Williams is more of a senior player, but you've got players, you've got McCart who's played about five or six games and give Neil played four and they're carrying you. Not good. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I just, it's not who we're picking. It's just, Letting letting those players, letting them read each other a little bit and get him build which players is gonna do or what play what ball they like to play or what and just know or and knowing each other's strengths a little bit. Because like obviously yesterday it just seemed like they're all singing from different hymn sheets and it were just you know mm. so yeah, um do I think we could win? Of course I think we can win. I know we're capable. And the reason why I'm saying it's dreadful, it's crap, is because I know they are capable of that. They're capable of a lot better performances than what they have uh, than what they showed yesterday. So shoes be in good form. I don't know. I've just said put Cosgrove in, he's got sent off on his band. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't want to connect you, mate. You were in full flow. <laughs> I just realised that. Um so yeah, McAtee then for Watters. Um and then yeah, so we'll see what we can do. Edge of edge of wit edge of edge of eh, one one nil. One nil maybe. One nil two two one maybe. It's gonna be tight well, game um, if, wins a win. if sorry, if Styles is still badly. Do we put Phillips in for? We've got to put I Phillips would. in. Yeah. Got, Phillips, yeah. got, Phillips has got to come in for Benson, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, What's again, that? I, I, think, I think when he come on, Phillips. Yeah. Phillips and McAtee when they come on, we looked, we looked a lot more. It looks a bit more feeling, right. We, we looked better, didn't we? Once them yeah. two come on, you just don't seem to be. The thing is with Phillips is because he's quite tall and he's quite. He throws him send. He throws him send about a bit, which obviously has its downsides. Uh, <laughs> Um, throws him to any challenges a little bit, bless him. But he, but overall, he's a bit more of a presence in that yeah. attacking position. And yeah. players are scared to approach, it, like they kind of back off him a little bit. And then Phillips can can pick can pick a pass um, to run us off. Just think he, I just think he's a better choice. But I mean, he's been dropped for last. He's been dropped for last two games now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like yeah. I, I'm looking at it, me and my brother were watching it, and I just says, why is he? What's happening? Is he not getting? Why is he not getting picked? I thought he, yeah. I looked at him and I thought he's going to be our central player this season, especially when signed contract as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Deal, so I thought, yeah. Interesting, uh, interesting thoughts. Uh, let us know your comments below. You know, we've had to talk about some Bobby Charlton, or obviously the late Orient game going forward about the uh, Shrewsbury Town game coming up. Let us know your thoughts. You know, what it a good point? What we lucky? Penalty, I think we all can agree, want a penalty. Uh, but again, it's all about opinions. Uh, let us know your thoughts, comments below. We'll answer them all. Dan and Ryan, appreciate you taking time out uh, this yeah, week well. to get this covered. A bit of a two in one show, covered a, quite a variety of things. Um, like I say, let's get back to work. Well, Tuesday night, under lights, let's get back to winning ways. We need to put pressure on top two, um, and we need to get his own, for, own record matching, if we can, his, own, uh, his away uh, form. So, Let's get some wins under the belt back at home and get some uh, kiss for a quick coming up in the next game coming up against Fleetwood, I believe. So, again, let's uh, back up with that to make it an atmosphere. So, yeah, Dan and Ryan, appreciate you taking time out. Have a good rest of your weekend. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>